So I thought I had footage of planning up this lumber, but I guess I don't. It's kind of a boring process on here anyway. But essentially I bought a bunch of four quarter red oak and that is going to be for the, the hardwood doors that go on the outside of this. And then I also bought a bunch of five quarter oak and that is gonna be used for the base. It's a little bit heftier. It usually finishes to about an inch and a quarter. And obviously the, the the four quarter will finish to a little bit less than than an inch so you can see this is what it looks like cleaned up I did this all at once the the big stack and I'm gonna start with the base first so um, I have this material here now I get this lumber I got from a, a really nice lumber source near where my old shop is because I haven't yet found a newer source where I am. So you can see that the sides are pretty clean and I don't have a jointer. So what I like to do when there's not a lot of bowing or comping, I cannot emphasize um, enough how unsafe this process would be if there's bowing or cupping or twists in your boards. But these boards don't have that and the sides are fairly flat. So what I do is I just run the boards against the fence. You can see I'm removing a very, very small amount of material. I could shift this fence about a 30 seconds of an inch and then flip the board and run it through again. And that, to the, to the most part, cleans up one side of these boards. So this second side I have here is, is going to be pretty clean. Then I could go through and you could see I marked that that is now the straight edge and I could reference that edge off the fence. You could see it is in fact extremely straight and then um, I could continue building with this material. I had made a jointing fence for my table saw, but um, at this point it's actually a little out of, out of square because if you use it repetitively, it's just particle board. So this is a process on shorter boards especially, you could see it works really well. And like I said, boards that are already fairly true to start with, so getting a good grade of rough lumber really helps. So now I'm ripping this into pieces. Forget exact, I think these were about two inches. So I'm going to be lap joining this whole piece together. I knew that this was going to be stained and I knew it was going to be stained black. So any sort of joinery on the edges was going to be fairly hidden. So lap joints are extremely strong. They're also very easy to, to make. So that's what I decided to do. You can see I set a stop to get the right width, which is going to be the width of all my boards. And then I raised the radial arm saw, did a couple test pieces to cut exactly halfway through the piece so that my lap joints will, will be nice and flush. You can see there's always a lot of testing and, and, and um, changing the depths of stuff in order to get it perfectly accurate before I go and cut all of my pieces. So it's always nice to have some, some pieces left over to play around with, with stuff like that. Once I had that set, I could go through and cut all my laps. Now, whenever I use this technique on the radial arm saw, I always um, emphasize there are easier ways to do this, but it's really easy to set up these laps on the radial arm saw. It's very, re um, the repeatability of it is also quite nice. And I could use other tools for other things while I'm doing this and keep this set up to cut the laps. So that's what I usually choose to do. So I went through and I made all my quarters and then these are my long edges is, is what I'm putting the laps on now. Obviously you're gonna be left with this, all these flanges and these curves, but um, a, a hammer cleans it up with a chisel very quickly. So I'm also gonna be putting a center uh, partition in these just for stability. This is more decorative than su uh, supportive. So I really only need those corners and then one in, the, one in the middle and that will be more than strong enough to hold up these cabinets. So same process, I measured the width to get it accurate. And then this one, I'm not gonna use a stop. I'm just gonna cut on the inside of my two lines. You can see I'm doing that right here. Obviously the height is still the same and then I could just go through and clean up in between my two marked lines. And then you can see I have the short pieces on the edges. I obviously built two of these. There's a front and the back. I could kind of take that excess material out of the center. And then you could see how those center partitions will now fit 
as well as the ends. And that is, that is going to be the front and the back of the base. So at this point, I'm going to glue this together, and then I'm going to prop everything in place with the cabinets on top, make sure it's the right dimension, and then I could cut my sides. So the nice thing about lap joints is, is there's a large gluing surface area. Um, this glue is extremely strong. It's stronger than the wood, and anytime you could amplify the surface gluing area, it just makes the joint stronger, which is one of the reasons these laps are so strong. You could also see the way this is designed. Anything sitting on top of it, the downward force, especially on the edges, um, it's almost like a house where the downward force is pushing and there's, there's um, nowhere for those edges to go because they go top to bottom on the, on, on the, to the floor and to the bottom of the cabinet, as well as the fact that they have that flange connecting the whole piece. So I glued these up, I, I clamped them to my table um, overnight, and then I could take it apart in the morning and pop them apart. So they will stick a little bit with the glue. You can see it could pop them apart pretty quickly. And then these are my two pieces. And like I said, I knew kind of what the depth was going to be, but I like to mock everything up to make sure I get it perfect. So you can see these are probably going to turn into my two uh, vertical sides. I have everything propped in place, clamped together because this plywood was pretty severely bowed. So I always had to have it clamped together and I can make sure that it's wide enough. And then I could go through and start take some measurements and make my sides. So this is the piece I'm going to be using on the side and for this I'm going to do little stub mortises and uh, tenons into the sides in order to attach it. So you can see I marked the thickness of where that lumber is. I came in and that is going to be, because um, like I said I'm doing about a half inch. So I'm going to cut off the excess which was that first outer line was excess and then it's a little half inch stub tenon and once again I'm cutting these on the radial arm saw. You can flip them over real quickly. Um, obviously I set up a little bit of material beforehand and test cut all of these to get it accurate and then that's the, the little tenons I'll have. So then I'm also going to cut off a little bit of the top of these because I don't want to remove a ton of my corner. So by cutting off a little bit of the top, I don't have to make as big of a mortise. And once again, this joint is going to be not only structurally strong, but it's really only tying the front to the back of the piece. Um, the weight is going to be sitting on the, the front and the back. So the fact that I have those tiny verticals on all of my edges, that is going to be strong enough to hold all of this up. So those are what my tenons are going to look like. You can see what I mean by I didn't want it going all the way to the top. And because this is already glued together, I couldn't use my mortising machine. So I just cut, I believe these were um, a half of an inch. So I just um, am pretty good at the hand drilling at this point. And I just drilled a couple holes and then I could clean it up with, with a chisel. And those are the holes I'm left over with. And um, because it was drilled out, the edges are rounded over. So I just rounded over the edges of the tenon. And that's basically the fit I'm going for. So now that I have, uh, obviously I did all of, all of the corners. And now I could go through and, and glue up this entire base. I glued it all together at once because I'm really only gluing together these mortise and tenons in the corners um, at this point. So obviously glue ups are always a little bit of a puzzle on certain things, especially getting everything aligned, but this went together fairly easily. Um, I could prop it on the ground, which is which is actually pretty square. The floor in this garage is, is, is pretty flat, which is nice. And I could just clamp all this stuff together. And once this is clamped together, I could still work on the top. I thought about putting some pieces in between in the center, but honestly it didn't really need it. And I could put some screws to the bottom of these cabinets into the front and the back of this frame and that will sure up the whole thing uh, quite well. So you can see how those cabinets will fit in the front. And this is obviously before I started doing the veneering and, and whatnot. This is a little bit out of order, but it makes more sense to, to do it this way. And there's that cabinet sitting on top.
So at this point, I'm going to start the doors and I'm going to do the exact same thing. The, the top and bottom of these are already planed and they were uh, flat enough and true enough on the edges with no cupping or twisting that I could rip one side off, flip it over, rip the other side off, and then that second side is now quite, quite square and flat against the fence. So I did that to all the lumber I was going to be using for the doors and then exact same process. I'm going to rip it down to size and I believe these all my rails and styles for the doors were about two inches as well. A lot of the measurements for these was cutting it um, to be able to use all of the all the lumber without having to buy more. So sometimes these measurements I have are, are uh, fractions of an inch, but I'm going to say it's an even two. So then there's my my piles. I have the long ones are are going to be my my verticals on the edges and then there's going to be three partitions in this so that's what I'm going to cut up out of that shorter pile at this point I, I also countersunk and screwed together all the cabinets and then I took some measurements I measured these cabinets while I was gluing them together and made sure they were square but at this point is when I started to realize that there was some nasty bowing on the center of these pieces which is one of the reasons why I like to do fixed shelves that usually helps alleviate this issue. So I had to measure all of my openings and I made all of my doors about a sixteenth of an inch bigger in each dimension so I would be able to fit all of them because they're going to be inset doors. If this was an overlay cabinet, none of this really would have been that much of an issue. So I'm going to be um, doing bridle joints on these on larger doors i preferred bridle joints than just having the shorter um, tongue and groove sort of style that i usually do on cabinet doors and i have a tenoning jig that's a very simple jig that rides on my fence but um, this is right when i had first moved so a lot of my stuff wasn't unpacked but someone had given me this really fancy delta tenoning jig years ago and I've never really used it because it's kind of a lot of, of frill to it and my other one worked really well but because I couldn't find my other one I set this one up and used it and it worked quite well it's very easy to clamp everything in place you can see I'm just cutting um, a, a, a solid joint right to the center flipping it so that it, it centers the joint and there's always going to be a little bit left in the middle and I could once everything's done adjust it and then get rid of that little flange in this in the center. So usually for the thickness of these joints I take my material and I break it into thirds so if this is a little less than than um, a little less than than an inch we're looking at about three-eighths of an inch for all of these pieces and then once again I could test for the receiving end of this bridal joint make sure it's a nice fit and then I could go through and cut all of these so once again I'm going to be doing those on the the radial arm saw so I have my stop set up the depth is going to be at the right depth based on that test cut and I could go through and cut the top and the bottom. Um, the, the middle partition I'm going to do a little bit differently so I'm not doing that at this moment and these are all going to be just the bridle joints which makes for a nice solid solid door. And you can see some of this lumber has a little bit of a bow to it so if you're doing lap joints this way sometimes you have to make sure you're pushing it and keeping it flat against the table so you don't get different different undulations in the depth but then you could see how these doors are going to go together and everything dry fits nicely and it's nice and strong so it holds together by itself I have a little bit of excess but that's okay because these doors um, like I said I'm making them oversized so I could custom fit all of them into place that's the outer frame and then, like I said there's going to be a, uh, a center partition in this as well which will also make the door a lot stronger so that partition is basically supposed to come lined up to this shelf so you'll be able to see what's on that top shelf but everything underneath of it will be hidden so you can see I have this propped in the frame and this is when I really started to realize how badly bowed the plywood is you can see there's a gap in the center but at the top it's flush but I put that in there to get that measurement which I believe was about 28 inches and then um, on these edges I can add add my center piece here so once again the measurements um, the marks on there are the width of the material I'm going to be using uh, 
my mortising machine to put mortises in here and that is just going to make a nice solid joint in the center it will also obviously get a panel to cover it so it's solid and then up top is going to be us pl plexiglass so that the top part is is see-through kind of like a traditional display cabinet so making mortises with a mortising machine is pretty straightforward um, and then I could go through and, and line these up, get my inside measurement. I like to get these towards the top because it's going to be the most accurate re measurement towards the top. In the center, some of this wood's bowing. Um, that's where you're going to lose your squareness and it could be a little bit off. So I make sure the door square, dry fit. I got my me measurement and then I added an inch to it on both sides because I'm doing about an inch deep mortise. And then these are those pieces so that that pencil mark is going to designate the inch tenon I'm making and then obviously that inner dimension is what I showed earlier that 18 inches and some change for that inner frame and then once again we're back at the radial arm saw making tenons which is essentially the way I do it on the radial arm saw is essentially a double sided lap and then um, same thing, same process, set everything up, do a couple test cuts, get it dialed in, and then I can make my, um, there's three doors, so three of these. Now, my mortising machine, it cut these a little bit off center, so you could see I'm doing the bottoms first, and then I'll cut the tops. That is sometimes an issue with that mortising machine. Um, I didn't, wasn't paying close enough attention. You could see it is a little off center, but that's okay. You can adjust it for the, the radial arm saw. It's a little bit longer because you have to go through and, and cut two different, two different depths, but it is doable to get it lined up. And then this is going to be the end of this video, and I'm going to start with finishing the doors uh, next video, and that should, that should be the last one for this series.